people are, are wondering who would win in a two and two. Shaq and Kobe versus LeBron and AD. I'm just going to say this now, get my answer out okay. the way. Love LeBron, love AD, Shaq and Kobe. Okay. Just two things. Two here. and two. The only reason I might say, the only reason. So if AD has the ball, I don't see Shaq checking him on the wing. And I can't see AD checking Shaq in the post. And I don't see, I love Kobe. Like, he's one of my heroes. But I don't see Kobe stopping LeBron in a post because how strong he is. And I don't, you know, LeBron's one of the best defenders there is. But I don't see him stopping. Uh, so basically whoever gets the ball whoever first. Whoever gets the ball first, game go to seven. <laughs> but let's throw this in there too, though, then. Are we talking about Shaq Kobe now or Nate Prime? <laughs> You gotta, give me, you gotta give us a. You can't just yeah. give it to him now, because if you give it to Kobe and Shaq now, I'm taking LeBron and AD. Uh. Prime, you got five seconds to answer. Uh. Prime, who Prime. you going with? Prime, Shaq, and Kobe. <laughs> I got to go with Shaq and Kobe. All right. Five I'm, seconds. I'm biased. I'm going with my teammates. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's just a debate. Um, no, um, we just. I'm, I'm, honestly, I, I'm with Lethal here. Whoever gets the ball first. That too. But I honestly think. I mean, it's, it's two on two. It's, 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 you it's gotta put a dribble limit on it. Yeah. You gotta put some type of limit on it because nobody just plays unlimited dribbles anymore. Nobody mm-hmm. plays before you post get, up for five seconds like, or five dribbles. Before we have this, it has to be what's the what's the rules of the game? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You know but it also said who gets the ball first. But yeah. I think if whoever gets the ball first, it it's has a pretty hard. good shot. Whew. Great shot. But if it's, if it's a if, say a five game series, whoever wins five games. I think I'm gonna give it to, to Bron and AD. Oh, sure. Also because I said I think that. When Shaq and Kobe were here, I'm not saying Shaq wasn't in his prime, but I think Bron and AD can give them a little. Because AD ha- hasn't peaked yet. Yeah. He has- what do you think was the biggest difference in that second half? You held them to 17 third quarter points and really getting up and down in transition and just kind of flipped the game. Um, I think we just got we got stops. We got stops and we started to push the tempo offensively. Um, we did a better job in the third quarter, not fouling. As much as we did in the first half, we put James to the line, I think, eight times. I think Russ had like six fouls, free throws attempts in the first half. So we kind of cut down on in the third quarter and made them make shots over the top, trying to contest. And uh, when we got stops, we got rebounds, and we was able to go. Yeah, they're such a unique team with how they play. Uh, what did you guys do with some of those more aggressive traps on James and all the rotations that it takes? So what goes into that? Um, a communication, number one. Um, you have to have uh, everyone on the string. Five guys got to be on the string at the same time. And you got to communicate throughout the whole possession because you're going to be out of place. Um, so uh, we did a great job of that for just putting it in this morning. You guys have just found ways to win games. Uh, in this case, no AD. Hadn't seen Houston yet. Uh, they're motivated, national TV and all that. Anything additional to just kind of keep building on what you've been learning about this team throughout the season? Uh, well, we want to continue to get better, you know, and we want to stay even killed throughout the whole season. It's an it's a 82-game season, and, uh, and we did that. Uh, we hated the loss that we had the other night against Orlando. Uh, so we had a couple of days to kind of just reshape, refocus, and uh, start the second half of the season. Uh, the right way, and we did that tonight. LeBron, you talked about getting stops in the third. A lot of teams, including maybe this team last year, wouldn't have come back like you guys did in that third quarter. Can you speak to kind of the character, the, the integrity of this team, what happened there? Um, we just want to continue to build. Um, you know, it's not about what happened last year. It's about what's going on right now today. And uh, we want to continue to build our habits. Defensively, we want to be on the stream. We want to communicate. Offensively, we want to share the ball and make sure everyone feels in, um, in, in good rhythm. So I think we, 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 we uh, took another step forward today. There's always a ton of Laker fans on the road, but today seemed to be pretty unique. And, and at the end of the game, I saw you acknowledge him. What, what's that like for you personally? Um, it's very humbling. Um, you know, and it's um, something that you really can't explain unless you're involved in it. Um, but we love uh, the Laker faithful. You know, either we in Staples Center or when they travel with us. And uh, tonight they show their asses, and we just try to give it back to them by performing the way we play it on the floor. What do you think was the biggest difference in that third quarter? You held them to 17 points and, and really flipped the game. Well, I think we really uh, we, we talked at halftime. I watched a lot of tape at halftime you know, about what we're trying to do defensively that we did not do very well defensively in terms of this scheme and how we're going to um, – you know, use use our double teams and um, with both Russell and with uh, um, with James, and you know we just didn't do it very well in the, in, the, in the first half, but we did a far better job of it in the third quarter. I think Kuz did a great job, uh, you know, with, with some one-on-one sequences with Russell, and um, you know I just think we just locked in better.
I know you watched how a lot of teams dealt with Harden uh, this year to see what was working. Uh, what specifically with that, kind of trapping him quickly and then having the rotation on the backside, uh, how did you kind of get that uh, to be more integrated into the second half? Well, it's, it's, it's really, I mean, I don't want to get too much into what our game plan was, but it's within what we do. You know, it wasn't really anything that I saw somebody else do. Uh, you know, it's it's within what we do when our when our center gets isoed. Um, you know, we just want to try to get the ball out of the, out of the ball handler's hands. And um, you know, our guys did a, like I said, we did a better job, um, you know, committing to it in the, in the in the third quarter in particular, but for the second half, and then rotating on the backside. What do you think got Kuzma in that rhythm in the second half? I think we just got, we were getting stops. You know, we get stops, we get out and run, and you know, Brown was throwing some darts. You know, he was finding them and. Hit a couple, a couple open threes, and it, you know, that always just helps your confidence. What did you like about his defensive, um, sort of the way that he locked in defensively today? Kuz? Yeah. Yeah, just, just containment. I mean, he works really hard on that end of the floor, and um, you know, we were, you know, not only uh, individually on Russell, but we were in rotations a lot tonight. You know, far more than I'm comfortable with personally, but um, you know, he's got length and athleticism to compete in those situations, and he did a great job with it tonight. Contavious, what a second half for you guys. I want to start on the defensive end. What was working so well with the traps on Harden, the rotations underneath, the rim protection, all of the pieces together? Uh, we knew what our game plan was. Uh, we knew we was going to be hit, uh, hitting James Harden uh, the whole game. So we really had to be uh, good on our rotation uh, and behind so, uh, and, and be ready to rebound and uh, scramble out. And can you take us through exactly what the plan was and how you executed it on James and how you were able to make that uh, uh, impact the rest of the defense? Yeah, uh, the plan was just to hit him, uh, send him to his weak hand, uh, and then be in full rotation after that. Uh, and I feel like uh, my teammates, uh, we did a hell of a job uh, the second half. You also got going on the offensive end in the second half, Contavious, playing off LeBron some, getting up and down in transition. What were you seeing for your opportunities there? Uh, just run. You know, uh, we watched film. You know, coach made an emphasis. Uh, just, man, run the floor, man. You can get either layups or we get wide open threes because they didn't get back. Uh, so I tried to make an emphasis on that when I came in, just, just run the floor. I know you guys don't like losing games. Uh, we saw what happened at home against Orlando. You come into this building, haven't seen them yet. No Anthony Davis. And yet, here you are again, finding a way to win. Uh, what does that say about this team? Uh, we had a, a, a hell of a team. You know, uh, it's next man, uh, next man up mentality. And I feel like, man, we, we do that like very well. You know, uh, no one complains. You know, we just here to play for each other. You know, and, and as a unit, uh, which is great. Not a bad way to start a trip, huh? Yes, thank you. Lakers without Anthony Davis go on the road and beat the Houston Rockets in their first meeting of the year. They start off the Grammy trip 1-0. Lakers were fighting uphill, it seemed like, that entire first half. Just couldn't get a call to go their way. Couldn't really close that gap. Kind of felt fortunate to be down six. Uh, refs missed a big goal 10. That would have been a four-point swing. But came out in that third quarter and absolutely dominated 32-17. to And then came out in the fourth one on that big run, and it was ball game, James. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, the first quarter, they're trying to, to fill out a team that had been struggling a little bit. Uh, Westbrook, uh, you know, he shot a volume of shots tonight. Uh, you know, Harden not really play his game, but the Lakers struggled a little bit in the first half. But you're right. They decided to play defense in that third quarter, Geeter. 17 points they only allowed. And then uh, I think guys like McGee started to uh, play defense. Pope. Kuz, a lot of guys in the absence of AD uh, stepped up and played the game, and it was the defense that turned it around. You know, people talk about the Milwaukee Bucks and the Clippers and the, and the Denver Nuggets having other guys besides their mm -hmm. superstars. People don't really talk about the Lakers, others. Mm -hmm. You know, Kuzma, a very nice game for him tonight, 23 points. KCP, 20 points, continuing almost a two-month run yeah. of very good basketball for Contavious Caldwell-Pope and, of course, LeBron James. And I'm not saying he should be the MVP, but if he's not at the top of your list right now, yeah. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I, I want to have lunch with you. I, I just want to point out a couple things. <laughs> I would agree. I just want to point out the fact that the Lakers are 4-1 and one over the last week and a half without Anthony Davis. Three wins on the road against probable Western Conference playoff teams. Dallas, OKC, and Houston. LeBron James, 31 points, 12 yeah. assists tonight. And for the Lakers, yet another added to the list, and LeBron and all of that, and, and I want to talk Houston because I feel like 
everybody kind of elephant in the room. They kind of like talk about it, and then, you know, we get to – look, James Harden is maybe the toughest one-on-one -on 